وها ويا لاكلوش Okay. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, the next session is going to start in uh, now. So, participants, ladies and gentlemen, we will start with the remote or in live keynote speech delivered by Professor Helen Karadza, Professor Emeritus from Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, Greece. The keynote speech will be moderated by Professor Karim Baina, Vice Dean of uh, uh, NCS. So, thank you. Good morning, morning, Professor Karatsa. Good morning, thank you. So, uh, we are very uh, pleased to welcome you uh, virtually uh, in uh, NCS. I am uh, Vice Dean in charge of research innovation and partnership and uh, I will be very happy to moderate this plenary session. So welcome. Professor Helen Karatsa is Professor Emeritus in the Department of Informatics and at the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, Greece, where she teaches courses in the postgraduate and undergraduate level and carries out research. Dr. Karatsa research interests include computer systems, modeling and simulation, performance evaluation, fog and cloud computing, energy efficiency in large scale distributed systems, resource allocation and scheduling and real time distributed systems. His plenary session talk is entitled Scheduling Real-Time Applications in Cloud and for Computing Environments. So we'll be happy to listen to you, Professor Helen Karadza. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, my, uh, my name is Helen Karadza. I am uh, with, in the, with the Department of Informatics at Stoddard University of Thessaloniki in Greece as an emeritus professor. It is my great pleasure to participate in the PBIOT 2001 event as a keynote speaker. First, I would like to thank all the conference organizers and especially Professor Mohamed Lazar for, uh, for their um, uh, kind invitation. The title of my talk is Scheduling Real-Time Applications in Cloud and Fog Computing Environments. And I will present research, current research, research trends and uh, future challenges. So the scope of the talk is to present state-of-the-art research covering a variety of concepts in cloud computing from the performance perspective, resource management issues that must be addressed in order to make clouds viable for high-performance computing, efficient scheduling techniques for complex real-time applications, and finally, to provide future trends and directions in the cloud computing area. First, uh, some cloud issues will be presented, then resource management and scheduling in clouds will be discussed, workloads, data intensive real-time applications. Then I will uh, talk about fog, view, mist, unit, jungle, task computing. And finally, I will provide conclusions and future directions. As you know, the overhanging flow of data of huge volumes generated by a wide spectrum of sources, such as sensors, mobile devices, or social media, and the Internet of Things has led to the emergence of trends such as big data and big data analytics. 
computationally intensive applications are employed in many domains, such as science, engineering, enterprises, finance, uh, healthcare, etc., in order to exploit the power of big data. Big data analytics employ computationally intensive algorithms in order to process big data and produce meaningful results in a timely manner. Considerably, applications operating on big data can be considered real-time with firm deadlines because failing to meet the time constraints would make the results useless. A large body of work has been devoted to developing various data and well techniques for the scheduling of data-intensive applications. In this context, the multi-use programming paradigm has been proposed by Google. As we know, the programming, this programming model is designed to process large volumes of data in parallel and it is inspired by the map and reduce functions which are commonly used in functional programming. The most popular implementation of the map reduce model is the Apache Hadoop framework which adopts a master slave architecture in order to process big data exploiting data locality. However, due to the fact that Hadoop considers only one slave mode at a time in order to schedule the tasks, there are cases where it does not exploit data locality effectively. Furthermore, it does not take into account other characteristics of the workload, such as deadlines and resource usage fairness. Resource allocation and scheduling issues. Scheduling manages the selection of resources for a job, the allocation of jobs to resources, and the monitoring of jobs execution. Composite jobs may have entered the lines, then we have the real-time scheduling, and software failures may occur during the execution of a composite job. And this is the case of fault-tolerant scheduling. A job may consist of independent tasks, which can be processed in parallel. This is the case of bubble task scheduling or a job may consist of frequently communicating tasks which must be processed in parallel. And these jobs are called dunk jobs. And we have then the dunk scheduling uh, case. Finally, a job may be decomposed into a collection of tasks with precedence constraints among them. These tasks may be scheduled on different nodes of the system. And then we have the data scheduling. With data intensive workloads. With the growth of big data, workloads tend to get more complex and computationally demanding. Data intensive applications are typically processed on interconnected computing resources that are geographically distributed. Computational grids and clouds are examples of such platforms. Data-intensive applications may consist of multiple component tasks featuring different degrees of parallelism and of variability in their computational demands and must effectively exploit data locality Data locality is a very important issue. Furthermore, they may have precedence constraints and specific deadlines and may impose several quality of service requirements, restrictions and objectives such as timelines, fault tolerance and energy efficiency. These features of the workloads, as well as the inherent characteristics of the computing resources required to, uh, which are required to process them, 
present major challenges that require the employment of effective scheduling techniques. Such applications cover the wide spectrum of areas like uh, healthcare, wealth forecasting, environmental monitoring, uh, social interaction, uh, uh, scientific research, etc. Clouds are often used to run real time applications. In real-time systems, the correctness of the, of the system does not depend only on the logical results of the computations, but also on the time at which the results are produced. Such systems are used for the control of nuclear power plants, financial markets, etc. The jobs in a real-time system have deadlines which must be met. If a real-time job cannot meet its deadline, then its results will be useless or even worse cat catastrophic for the system and the environment that is under control. This is a presentation of an aperiodic real-time job where we can see the arrival time, the start time, the finish time and the deadline. Here we have the presentation of a periodic job where we can see the period, the completion time and also the deadline. In real-time systems, it is often more desirable for a job to produce an approximate result by its deadline than to produce an exact result later. This is the case of imprecise or approximate computations, which can achieve that. It is a technique according to which the execution of a real-time job is a lower to return intermediate, that is, imprecise results of poorer but still acceptable quality when the deadline of the job cannot be met. It is assumed that every job is monotone, that is, the accuracy of the intermediate results is increased as more time is spent to produce them. If the execution of the monotone job is fully completed, then the results are precise. Typically, a monotone job consists of a mandatory part followed by an optional part. In order for a job to be completed, it must complete at least its mandatory part before its deadline. Here we have a representation of, a, 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 of a imprecise computation. We can see uh, that we can delay the start of the execution of the job up to the job's modification time and NT because the remaining time up to the deadline is only the job's mandatory part and the job has to finish at least the mandatory part. If a job there is waiting for service and its notification time is reached, then it can start execution if its assigned processor is idle or the job in service in this processor has completed its mandatory part. In this case, the job in service is a board and job occupies the processor. If job J cannot start execution, it is considered a best loss because it will definitely miss its deadline. For dollars, is a very important issue in cloud computing and particularly for real-time applications. Real-time systems need to tolerate possible software faults that may cause failures during the execution of the job. In precise computations combined with checkpointing can provide fault tolerance in large-scale distributed real-time systems such as clouds. This is achieved with application directed checkpoints. So each job is responsible for checkpointing its own progress periodically by saving its intermediate results at regular intervals during its execution so that a checkpoint takes place 
when the job completes its mandatory part. Checkpoints occur when, uh, in, this, uh, in this figure, we can see uh, uh, checkpoints which occur at different uh, times, and we can see a uh, checkpoint, checkpoint 3 uh, takes place after the job has finished its mandatory uh, part. When the failure occurs, the interrupted job is rolled back and resumes execution from its last generated checkpoint. If the last generated checkpoint of the interrupted job occurs after the completion of the job's mandatory part, then there is no need for rollback. The job is aborted and we accept the imprecise results set by the job's last checkpoint. Application directed checkpointing and with in combination with approximate uh, computations have been studied in this research. With my uh, uh, research collaborator, collaborator Georgius Fabrinidis, former PhD student of mine. The objectives of this research are to provide resilience against temporary software failures that can give all applications we need the deadline, provide application results of high quality and minimize the monetary cost which is charged to the end users. Another case of uh, parallel jobs is uh, um, a group uh, of um, jobs uh, belonging to this uh, type are called back of tasks jobs. And the relevant scheduling is called back of task scheduling. In the figure, you can see uh, an, a, a back of tasks job which consists of n parallel independent tasks. So, a, a bag of tasks So, a bag of tasks job is a job which consists of single independent tasks which arrive to the system at the same time, but they belong to the same job. Execution of a bag of tasks job is completed when all of the, all of the tasks which belong to the same job Pertains their execution. In this sense, the performance of the software as a service cloud under various starting spans and different levels of workload computational demand variability is evaluated, and the workload consists of bug of tasks jobs which have soft deadlines and different levels of variability in their computational demands. Here we can see the usefulness of the results of a job with a soft deadline over time. We can see that after the deadline, the usefulness drops down. The usefulness of the results. Here is the actual network model. Um, of the software as a service cloud, which we, we have used. And here we have uh, the monetary cost per time unit, which is charged for the execution of each job according to the provided level of quality of service as defined in the military service level agreement. We can see in this uh, figure, that uh, up to the a time, a specific time bound, the monetary cost drops down uh, with time because the results are not uh, delivered on time, are not delivered fast. Here we, we can see the average makes find a completed job. Um, versus uh, coefficient of variation using two different uh, uh, scheduling uh, techniques uh, as we can see.
and uh, big data analytics research has been uh, carried out uh, using bug of tasks applications. Um, so, recently, big, uh, big data analytics are now offered as software as a service. Besides the heterogeneity and multi dependency of the underlying virtualized environment, scheduling, real and intensity, bug of tasks in software as a service cloud involve another serious challenge, which is data locality. That is, an effective data well scheduling policy should be employed so that as many tasks of the workload as possible are scheduled on the virtual machines where the required input data are available on, thus avoiding the overhead incurred by moving large data even machines. In this research, the impact of data locality on the performance of the software as a service cloud where real-time data intensity, bug of tasks are scheduled dynamically under various data reliability conditions is investigated. The simulation results show that among the other characteristics of the workload, data locality should be taken into account during scheduling, particularly in the general case where the input data are not replicated on all of the virtual machines in the cloud. This is a representation of the response time versus data availability. We can see that it is, uh, the performance is better or uh, with increasing data availability. Also the cost, and finally, some of the most commonly used scheduling algorithms for bug of tasks applications are enhanced by utilizing approximate computations studied in this research, published in 2010. The impact of different levels of variability in the computational demands of the applications on the performance of the examining heuristics has been investigated. Gang scheduling. Gangs are the opposite of part uh, of tasks because the tasks communicate very rapidly. So they have to run simultaneously at the same time. This is a representation of, gun, of a gun job with n tasks. And here we can see the very frequent communication between the tasks of a gang. Here is a queuing network model for the service of gang uh, jobs. So, in gang scheduling, the tasks of a job need to start execution simultaneously because, in this way, the risk of a task waiting to communicate with another task that is currently not running is avoided. Without gang scheduling, the synchronization of a job's tasks would require more context switches and thus additional overhead. In gang scheduling, in order for a job with the end tasks to be completed, end processors must execute the tasks concurrently. In this research, we studied the impact of checkpointing interval selection on the performance of a software as a service cloud, where fine grained parallel applications with firm deadlines and approximate computations are scheduled for execution under various failures probabilities and the relation between the checkpointing interval and failure probability has been studied and analyzed in this research. 
Tax scheduling, a different workload model is the following. A job may be decomposed into a collection of tasks with precedence constraints among them so that a task's output may be used as input by other tasks of the job. That is, we have the case of directed acyclic graphs. In order for a task to start execution, all of its predecessor tasks must have been completed. This is a representation of a directed acyclic graph job, and we can see the critical path here in gold. In the imprecise computations case, the output of a parent task in a DAG may be imprecise. Therefore, the child tasks that use as input the result of the particular parent task may have input error. Input errors may cause an increase in the execution time of the mandatory part of a child task since more time may be required by the child task to correct the error and to produce an acceptable result. The quality of a DAX result ultimately depends on the result precision of the DAX exit tasks. Therefore, all exit tasks of a graph should be allowed to complete their entire optional path. And in this research, we have examined scheduling, a scheduling heuristic for real-time workflow applications in a heterogeneous platform as a service or software as a service cloud. Energy efficiency is a, in large-scale distributed systems reduces energy consumption and operational costs. However, energy conservation should be considered together with user satisfaction regarding quality of service when we have real-time applications with deadlines. Complex multiple task applications may have precedence constraints and specific deadlines that may impose several restrictions and quality of service requirements. There is a growing focus on the minimization of the carbon footprint of the computational resources, especially through the efficient scheduling of the workload. In these two um, research, in these two papers um, with Georgios Stavrinidis, energy aware scheduling of back of tasks applications with time constraints in large scale heterogeneous distributed systems such as grids and clouds have been studied and investigated. An energy aware heuristic for the scheduling of real time workflow applications in cloud environment has been proposed by uh, the authors of the following two papers and their approach utilizes per core DBFS technique on the underlying heterogeneous multi-core processors in combination with approximate computations in order to fill in scheduled gaps. Fog computing. While the need for scalability and speed is increasing, the resources available to the end users are often more diverse than those contained in a single cluster grid or cloud system. Moreover, more and more applications, for example, Internet of Things applications, are producing a significantly huge amount of data, and it is not sensible to upload all of them on the cloud. As a result, four computing systems are proposed so that all the available computational power be combined and be closer to the application. This is the research of a PhD, Karen, PhD student of mine. Fog computing extends the cloud computing paradigm to the edge of the network, thus enabling a new breed of applications and services. Defining characteristics of the fog 
are uh, low latency and location awareness, widespread uh, geographical distribution, mobility, very large number of nodes, uh, uh, predominant role of wireless access, and uh, strong presence of streaming and real-time applications. This is a representation of a fog system uh, model, which uh, has been simulated in order to find uh, its performance. A hybrid fog and cloud-aware heuristic for the dynamic scheduling of multiple real-time Internet of Things workflows in a three-tier architecture is presented in this research published in 2019. The approach aims to schedule computational intensive tasks with low communication demand to be executed on the cloud. Other tasks with low computational requirements but high communication cost are processed on the fog. The proposed approach consists, considers the communication cost resulted from the transfer of data from Internet of Things devices to the fog layer. New computing. New computing is a new computing paradigm appeared after the widely acceptance of cloud computing. Characteristics. Local computers provide rich microservices independent of cloud services. These microservices inherently collaborate with cloud services. Mist computing. Mist computing is the extreme edge of a network typically consisting of microcontrollers and sensors. Mist computing uses microcomputers and microcontrollers to feed into <coughs> fog computing nodes and potentially onwards towards the centralized cloud computing services. The two main goals of MIST computing include enabling resource harvesting by computation and communication capabilities available on the sensor itself and allowing arbitrary computations to be provisioned and deployed, managed and monitored on the sensor itself. Fluid computing is an architectural principle based on the abstraction of the topological details of the computational infrastructure. Fluid architectures provide an end-to-end -end fabric that can be used to seamlessly provision, deploy, manage and monitor applications regardless of whether the underlying resource is provided by the cloud infrastructure the fog infrastructure or by fix. Therefore, fluid computing unifies under a single abstraction cloud, fog and mist computing. In other words, cloud, fog and mist computing can be seen as application of fluid computing in a specific band <coughs> Jungle computing is a form of high-performance computing that contributes computes, dis, uh, distributes uh, computational work across cluster, grid, and cloud computing. And there is lots of research uh, in uh, this area of uh, jungle computing. Dust computing, smart dust describes microelectromechanical devices that include sensors, computational ability, and more. Smart dust are tiny computers that are designed to function together as a wireless sensor network. Currently, smart dust particles are quite small, about the size of a grain of rice, but in the near future, it is expected that the technology will advance so that each sensor is as small as a dust particle or a grain of sand. The basic idea behind smart dust is that you could drop thousands of tiny sensors over a landscape and create 
an ad hoc wireless sensor network in places where there isn't one already. Conclusions and future directions. Advances in processing, communication and systems middleware technologies have, as a result, new paradigms and platforms for computing. The cloud computing paradigm promises on-demand scalability, reliability and cost-effective high performance. Our perception of computing is changing constant, constantly. We can mention, we have mentioned cloud, fog, view, mist, fluid, jam, dust computing. The rise of cloud computing presents a new opportunity for the evolution of computing. Maybe in a few years, computers will be nothing more than thin clients, and all our processing will be done on the cloud. Cloud computing offers great opportunities for scientists, organizations, and enterprises. Simulation modeling is a valuable, cost-effective tool to efficiently examine the costs and risks which are associated with moving computationally data-intensive real-time applications to the cloud. By using simulation, risks can be avoided and the possible benefits of moving real-time application applications to the cloud can be in advance estimated. However, multiple issues have to be addressed before clouds become viable for large-scale real-time distributed processing. Security and availability. We need the improvement of existing technologies or the introduction of new ones in order to achieve scalability that spans a very large number of nodes. Thank you very much. And I hope you, you listen to me. If I, if I have uh, understood well uh, uh, your question, uh, um, it depends uh, on, on the type of applications. Uh, so all applications are not the same. Uh, even, if, if, even if they refer to analyt to uh, big data analytics or, or any, any different application, it depends on the type of the application. Uh, so, 
if something, uh, if an application uh, is not very much um, uh, computationally demanding, it um, it might uh, and it has uh, um, low communication overhead. Then we, it is better, of course, to 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 run this application uh, on the cloud because the cloud is more powerful uh, computationally. Uh, however, if there is an Internet of Things application, uh, depending on the structure of the of this. Uh, Internet of Things application, we might, uh, 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 which is not so much uh, computationally demanding, but it involves uh, a lot of uh, communication overhead. Then we might, uh, then it could be better to run it uh, in, in the fog, or uh, it depends on the type of the, of the Internet of Things application. We might uh, run it. Uh, uh, we might run it cl very close to the sensor if we have uh, uh, this uh, a device very very close to the sensor, uh, not to the cloud. But not all applications, not every application, we can say all application. It is better to run uh, in the fog or in the cloud. No, it depends. It depends on the characteristics of the jobs. Uh, in, uh, in papers which uh, we have uh, uh, with Georgios uh, Stavrinidis, uh, uh, where we study uh, cloud and fog computing for real-time applications, in precise computations, etc., etc. Um, in, uh, in, in these papers, um, we mentioned uh, all the restrictions, I mean, uh, what can be run in the cloud and what can be run in the fog. So there is not, a, um, what I, I want to say, there is not a general uh, rule about uh, all applications. It depends. I don't know if I, if I answered your question. I fully understand your, your answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is, is there some question in the audience? Uh, excuse me, the line is not very good. I cannot, uh, I have not understood your la your last, uh, what you, say, you said just now. I, I just opened the discussion among the audience to okay. accept okay. questions. And I thank you for your answer about my question. Okay, thank you. Is there some question in the audience? So, waiting for other questions, I have myself a question. Uh, okay. th there exists one, one pattern in for computing called days, days pattern. Uh, telling that uh, due, uh, eight, due uh, nodes uh, and uh, age nodes and folk nodes and central um, cloud nodes may uh, communicate their uh, results. For example, when we deploy artificial intelligence uh, analytics in order to feedback uh, to feedback uh, local and central systems about uh, computed results, for example, in reinforcement learning or online supervised learning, so the, the due nodes or the dust nodes may feedback the, the age node and etc. to the fog to the fog and to the cloud in order to improve the intelligence of uh, algorithm. Uh, do you think that uh, we need uh, more architectural patterns in order to, um, to have some reference architecture about all this topology of uh, cloud dust jungle uh, computing in order to help uh, cloud computing architects 
to, to better tune and uh, design their architectures? Um, if, if I have understood well, uh, because the line, as I said, is not a very, very good when I, I listen to you, I don't know if you listen to me uh, okay. Um, I, if I understood well, you mean if uh, uh, it is possible uh, uh, to employ uh, artificial intelligence in order that uh, the cloud computing uh, architects uh, uh, make cloud more efficient and uh, to decide, uh, if I understood well, where the applications can run in cloud or in uh, in uh, fault, etc. Of course, uh, when we when uh, somebody uh, schedules uh, uh, needs scheduling techniques, uh, new scheduling techniques, uh, which uh, can be efficient uh, in uh, in uh, fog, for example, uh, rather than uh, in uh, in the cloud. Uh, with artificial intelligence, we can understand. Uh, uh, which type of applications uh, perform better in this uh, in this architecture or in the other one? And uh, then to to, to have um, to to have to to draw some conclusions that uh, this um, this, um, this this type of applications uh, benefit uh, more uh, in time, in cost, uh, in. Um, in um, being precise more uh, if they run uh, in the cloud rather than in the fog. So uh, artificial intelligence can help, but at the same time, the characteristics of the applications are what is what um, defines uh, the, uh, uh, the better platform uh, to be used. I, I don't know if, uh, if I understood well and answered well. And of course, uh, we can add uh, um, artificial intelligence in our scheduling techniques. Uh, however, um, what will we decide if the application is very much uh, computational intensive and not uh, communication intensive? Um, artificial intelligence will uh, teach us that uh, it requires to be to run on the cloud up to that point rather than in the fog because uh, in the fog we have less communication of course uh, generally, at the edge, we have uh, less communication, but uh, we don't have the power of uh, of uh, cloud uh, uh, computations, computational ability. What, what I, I mean, uh, Professor, is that uh, some workflow applications are by nature deployed on cloud, fog, age, dew, and dust in yeah. parallel, since, for example, the sensor itself embeds intelligence. The fog itself embeds another level of intelligence, and yeah. the central cloud itself embeds a higher level of intelligence. And this workflow application uh, for some domain need to be uh, need to have uh, a cyclic graph uh, scheduling. Yes. So, how to ensure uh, this uh, uh, this uh, coordination between many types of clouds? Yes. If, if, we, if we talk uh, uh, for one workflow application, which consists, for, exa for example, uh, of, um, of uh, 10, uh, ten uh, 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 nodes, which are each node in, in, a, in a dagger, in a, in a workflow, 
represents a, co a computational volume. As you, here, the problem is that we cannot, um, without studying the DAG, we cannot say we will run one, no, one node of the DAG, one uh, computational volume in cloud, the other computational volume in the fog, and the other computational uh, uh, volume in the, uh, let's say, in the edge, in the sensor itself, etc. Uh, if, uh, what do, uh, it depends on the structure of the workflow. If we send, the, for example, to the cloud, uh, one computational volume and a child task uh, is, uh, is waiting uh, for the results of this node of the DAG. It depends if we took into account also the communication cost between the cloud where a, a, a parent task is running and a, another task is close to the sensor. I mean, is, is the overhead, um, uh, uh, does the, the overhead uh, justify the, the time, the, the, the concurrent execution of these uh, tasks, uh, which if they have uh, compute, if they, if they are in the same path, there are precedence constraints. They cannot run simultaneously. One has to wait for the other. So, is it okay to wait to, to finish in the cloud and having the other, uh, the, the other child task, for example, in the form, waiting for the results? And when, when uh, the results are ready, they will not reads the fog immediately. There is uh, the, the network where the output of uh, the parent task has to be, to, to, to be sent to the child task. So we need to, 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 to see if this, this, uh, this um, overhead justifies that uh, for some reason we decided to run one parent task in the cloud and the child task in the fog, uh, because after the parent task of this workflow, uh, another uh, parent task of another workflow will start uh, in, in, the, in, uh, in the cloud. So, the, uh, really, uh, it's, uh, um, it's, uh, compute, its decision depends on the dependencies between um, the nodes of a workflow, on the on the network, on uh, on this on, on how um, how fast are the uh, the computational resources in uh, in the cloud in the fog. So we need to know uh, all the system, the capabilities of the system and the characteristics of the workflows. Uh, there is, we cannot decide, uh, uh, there are millions of cases of workflows. In one work, workflow, for example, we have a chain of tasks only. So each parent task has only a single uh, child task, etc., etc. So we have a chain of tasks. Uh, this is not the same case as when we have a, 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 a general structure of a workflow where we have a, 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 <coughs> excuse me, um, a parent task and many tiles and, and then many, many, many subtrees, etc., etc. Or we might have uh, many parent tasks which uh, feed uh, other child tasks. So, uh, it depends on the form of the workflows, uh, on the characteristics of the networks, uh, on the dynamics of uh, uh, cloud and fog, etc. Uh, artificial intelligence will help uh, in some decisions, 
but every case is different. This is the reason we, we study all these cases via simulation, because with simulation, modeling with simulation, uh, it is, you can have experiments with many, many, many cases uh, which uh, you are not able to, uh, to, to, to run in a, in a real system. In a real system, you can have uh, the applications which uh, happen to have uh, one day. Why in, uh, with simulation you can draw general results? saying that if uh, this is the type, if this is uh, um, the power of the, uh, if, if this is the type of the applications, uh, this type of, uh, of workflows or another type, and if this is the system, this is the capability of the cloud, this is the capability of, uh, uh, of the fog, this is the probability for failures, this is etc, etc, etc. All these uh, uh, conclusions which you, you, you draw from modeling and simulation of queuing network models and synthetic workloads made from uh, using probability distributions, you can feed artificial intelligence with the conclusions you have drawn for various types of systems, applications, conditions, etc. So, artificial intelligence can use this knowledge and to use it in the, in the future. I don't know if I have uh, Thank mentioned you. it. Thank you and, uh, very, very much, Professor yeah. Helen Carranza, Thank for your you. very rich uh, answer. Uh, you are uh, Professor Emeritus in the Department of Informatics, Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, Greece. Thank you very much for your time uh, and we wish we can invite you physically next edition of Big Data and IoT International Conference. Thank you very much. Very much. It will be my great pleasure to participate again next year in as a keynote, if you wish. So, thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you very much, thank Professor. You. Thank you, thank you Professor you. Helen Carranza, for the keynote speech, and Professor Karim Baina for moderating this uh, rich, uh, really rich and interesting talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So, we are now continuing our meeting to the next agenda, that is to hear the keynote speech, which will be delivered by Prof. Alias Rahman from University Technology, Malaysia, Johor Bahru, Malaysia. The keynote speech will be moderated by Prof. Claude Duvalet from Le Havre University. Mr. Alias Rahman, Assalamu alaikum. Bonjour. Bonjour. So you are uh, listening to me good? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. So it's a great pleasure to uh, to chair this session and to introduce the professor Ayasa Rachman. Uh, so, Professor uh, Alias Rachman, Abdul Rachman, is a 3D uh, Geographical Information System Professor at University Technology Malaysia, uh, from Johor Bahru. He received his PhD in year 2000 from the University of Glasgow in United Kingdom, and his Master of, and his master of Science in uh, Geographical Information System from ITC uh, in the Netherlands and uh, is a Bachelor of Science in Surveying and Mapping in 1987 uh, from NEP in uh, United Kingdom. Uh, his current professional activities focus on 3D uh, geographical information system, uh, 3D 
cadaster and Swedish city modeling for uh, several international uh, societies such as uh, International uh, Society of Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing, uh, Federation of International Geomatics, uh, uh, 3D Geo Info, and, and uh, Geo Advance. So uh, today he will present uh, a keynote about uh, 3D uh, city modeling from large print of cloud. So his presentation uh, described 3D uh, city modeling from large point uh, cloud and 3D uh, geo uh, spatial uh, database of the creative models. Uh, so I will uh, let him uh, present uh, his uh, keynote. Uh, and so thank you, dear professor, to, uh, to give this keynote uh, to us uh, today. So I let you talk. Thank you, uh, Professor Claudie Dubare, um, and thank you very much for your kind introduction. Uh, there is a slight change of my topic or title. Um, I think we have to get it. Yeah, the recent uh, one is the uh, Enhancing 3D GIS Function. Okay. I hope it's still relevant with uh, uh, BDI or TV, uh, hopefully. Uh, let me share a slide, some slide with you, or with the audience. Can you see the slide and is the sound uh, okay or not? Yes, all is okay. We see your slide. Okay, and the voice? And the voice is perfect. All right, very good. All right, thank you. Um, all right, so today I would like to uh, spend um, uh, one hour or 45 minutes uh, describing um, one uh, major topic within the 3D GIS. Uh, I call it enhancing 3D GIS function. Uh, so as you can see on the slide, myself from UTM, from 3D GIS Research Lab. Um, so we are focusing on the 3D uh, GIS research for, since for two decades. Um, and, all right, so um, the content of the presentation, basically I want to say a few words on the, uh, the, on the 3D GIS and then what are the functions uh, involved that we need to have as part of the 3D GIS and then the main two functions that we developed um, for the last two years uh, we call it 3D generalization uh, and a 3D spatial access method um, and then I also would like to uh, highlight uh, several issues and challenges uh, within, the, um, within the 3D GIS function and then of course the uh, um, the, the take home messages of concluding remarks. Um, so basically, um, as we know, I mean, uh, the GIS community or GD GIS community, we uh, realize um, today that uh, GD GIS um, require uh, basically several um, techniques and new algorithm. Uh, to handle uh, 3D uh, special objects, right? For example, for example, buildings, plan, etc. But this, uh, this, uh, this uh, so presentation basically focuses on uh, 3D buildings rather than uh, irregular objects like trees or plants. And then uh, the 3D GIS function that I uh, would like to discuss in detail is basically the 3D utilization and special access method. The other function, basically, as you can see on the slide, for example, 3D modeling, 3D topology, uh, 3D database and visualization uh, will not be a focus here, but they are still important um, to the uh, to the community. But again, um, uh, some of them are already solved, some are already um, more or less uh, about to be solved, or at least in the discussion with the 3D GIS community. Um, so, hopefully, the 3D utilization and 3D spatial access method, uh, we think that um, the function that we develop 
should be able to be uh, to be fully developed uh, within the um, new version of 3D GIS software, hopefully in the near future, right? So, um, because until today, until today we still have no, still have no um, real 3D GIS software, right? So we are here basically to discuss uh, the two major functions that we really need in uh, 3D GIS software. All right, so the, the two functions basically, the usage are basically, um, uh, for the uh, navigation, the 3D, I call it 3D virtual navigation, uh, within a region or within a city, and also uh, for the second part, which is a special access method, the usage is specifically to expedite uh, 3D record or search, uh, 3D record search, especially when when it comes to a large data set. Right? So today, there are many organizations um, around the globe, especially mapping agencies, or GIS agencies uh, uh, try to develop uh, a 3D uh, city model for their, um, their major cities, like for example, yeah, you can see, for example, I don't know, Rabat, for example, major cities, uh, Casablanca, uh, um, and other cities uh, in, in Europe, uh, for example, Helsinki, uh, they have the, the 3D city model, uh, which millions, millions of uh, 3D buildings. So by having millions 3D buildings within the 3D city model, I mean virtually we have an issue to get uh, the data or to to, to, to retrieve uh, the data from database um, um, in a short shortest shortest time as possible. Right? So we still have an issue. So we attempt to develop uh, this kind of uh, tools. For the uh, 3D GIS, right? Uh, special, we call it 3D special access method. Um, all right, for the first function, uh, 3D digitalization, uh, as you can see um, on the uh, first part of the slide, uh, this is traditional mapping uh, process, if you like. Uh, the digitalization is basically from, you know, from last scale, from your left to the uh, right side of the slide, right? From the, 125,000 uh, scale to 150,000, and then maybe up to one to 500,000, or even one to one million kind of mass scale. So that is the standard process within the uh, um, uh, mapping task, right? Uh, this is traditional mapping task uh, using maps, right? And then today, if we develop 3D city model, uh, normally the realization involves from uh, level of detail four uh, to level of detail three, and then to level of detail two, and then up to the uh, LOD one, right? So from detail, uh, you can see on the slide, LOD four contains everything, contains the most detail uh, within that building, and then up to the LOD one is basically only uh, one block. So the realization is basically from, from the detail to the, uh, the, the cost. So LOD4 to be LOD1. So this is basically the, uh, the uh, utilization process within the maps as well as the uh, 3D buildings. Now, how to do that within the utilization? So we, um, we, we develop a, 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 some kind of a simple uh, um, tools uh, to simplify uh, the complex uh, object or on like uh, shapes building, right? So as you can see on the slide, uh, from the several nodes that represent uh, building footprint or building parameters or parameters, then we can develop, uh, we can uh, develop into several uh, uh, lines uh, from, from several from several nodes, and then you can develop into uh, several lines. So from these several lines, so we can extrude uh, the, uh, the the coordinate into uh, available height. So at the end of the day, you can have this uh, uh, the, the uh, potential height of, of each building. Uh, so this is the what we call simplification uh, method of the um, complex shape. Uh, in other view, um, so the same building, so we use uh, several threshold. Uh, threshold mean uh, in this case is a uh, Double meters. So if we use five meters threshold, you can see this application is like uh, the first one. 
and then in the middle is basically the threshold is on 10 meters and the right side is basically the threshold is on 20 meters. So different threshold produce different uh, generalization or simplification uh, outcome. Uh, if we look into the um, if, uh, if we look into the uh, parameter of the building uh, or uh, the footprint of the building, you can see um, the uh, simplification method produced um, the uh, the uh, generalized building shape um, according to the uh, threshold five the threshold five means threshold five meters. So you can see the the outcome from the original uh, building into the uh, generalized. Uh, shift of the uh, building. Uh, same thing here. So just a different uh, different shape of the building. Um, all right. So and then the other the other part of the generalization involve uh, we call it aggregation. Aggregation in generalization is basically um, a way to aggregate. Yeah, a way to aggregate uh, from um, several several blocks into maybe one or two blocks. Yeah? So this is what we call aggregate. So we can combine. In other words, we combine a complex uh, shape of building into a simplified version of the buildings. So in here we use a triangulation and then from triangulation uh, we can come we can create the complex uh, complex half and then from complex half so we can uh, uh, do the utilization of the uh, building for the aggregation uh, Okay, so this is basically the um, the uh, simple uh, GUI for the uh, aggregation. Sorry, but for the um, uh, generalization, uh, it is based on uh, Python that uh, my student developed um, two years ago. Um, yeah, so three we call it three dimensional generalization of buildings. Um, we we think that this generalization technique is very useful for uh, mapping agencies. Because at the moment we can see uh, this understanding is hardly available within the 3D GI software or any any software that try to to manage uh, uh, 3D buildings, right? But in future, right? In future, I would say this is uh, quite interesting and to, worth to look at, and uh, because today not many people or not many agencies uh, uh, are interested in this kind of. Uh, Translation. Uh, why? Because at, at, at this time in more at this point in time, people are still busy constructing the model, right? So the quality aspect, yeah, or the localization aspect, still uh, still uh, far away. So this, hopefully, this approach will uh, trigger uh, uh, a new new trend for the uh, 3D GI software development, right? So this is good for uh, I think next two or three years to come. Um, all right, so this is another, this is a, it is an analysis here, right? For example, if we have original, uh, original, um, original pertences that represent buildings, uh, and then it will reduce into uh, several, several, um, uh, several pertences, but still maintain the original, uh, original shape of the uh, pyramid of the buildings. So you can see on the slide, uh, on the uh, second second uh, drawing is basically um, uh, with a uh, forty eight um, percent remained of the uh, I mean from the uh, software and then uh, 50 percent removed so still maintaining the the uh, outcome of, I mean the, the real uh, I mean the overall overall shape of the building. Okay, and then this another uh, based on different threshold, right? So I go quickly here, uh, still maintain the shape, and then if we if we test if we test interval of time, so you can see uh, the uh, time plus the together with the uh, data volume reduction, uh, with the, the table uh, is described the 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 relationship between data reduction and the uh, converted time interval in terms of seconds, right? So, for example, uh, rule number one, data reduction around 12%, so computing time around 21, 25%, so 21.25 seconds, and then it goes down, uh, rule number five, 50% more or less, and then the, the computing time is, uh, is uh, 
uh, less, uh, less, less uh, 1.25 per second. So this shows that uh, the, uh, the, um, the, the timing is, uh, works within the, the given uh, data set. Okay, a more detailed kind of uh, simplification outcome. Uh, you can see uh, with different tolerance or with, with different uh, threshold, uh, you can see um, um, the, the uh, relationship between the, the volume of data with the degree of reduction and with the computing time. Right? So this is a little bit detailed. Uh, so I would say the innovation technique that we develop uh, 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 applicable if we have 3D data within CTGML format only, right? And the data uh, does not have a very sharp, very sharp uh, kind of uh, edges, right? So uh, with the curves, with the intrusion, with the exclusion, that should be fine. So this is the um, uh, summary for the organization. Now, for the function number two, uh, database, or is part of the 3D spatial access method. So we need, we need 3D spatial access method in order to retrieve, um, in order to retrieve um, a large data set, yeah, within, um, within second, for example, depend, again, depend on the number of um, volume of data set. So I put it here, next generation of the database require fast indexing mechanism, yeah, for retrieving large 3D spatial data set and record. So we, I put it here, a uh, 3D model that we developed for the Trastam City a years ago. So we have to have the database, and then within that database, we need to have a um, advanced 3D spatial access method in order to retrieve the 3D data within, uh, I mean, within the, uh, as fast as possible, right? Um, so this is a requirement at the moment. Uh, not many database, uh, I mean, the commercial database available uh, to, to, to have this uh, fast uh, data retrieval. Uh, most of the current database, for example, Oracle, they use, Oracle database, they use a um, uh, 3D R3, yeah, 3D R3. Uh, um, so compared with our technique, I think ours is better. Uh, I will show you in a few minutes, uh, around 50% better than the, the current uh, or the, the commercial uh, Oracle database. Uh, so the technique that we develop uh, consists of uh, several sub, uh, sub um, tasks, classification, uh, clustering, Voronoi partitioning, and then of course we, we use the hierarchical country structure. Uh, for the classification, uh, the, 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 the city or the area or region, we um, classify into, uh, into the um, uh, parallel pipe, uh, parallel pipe. Um, so this is the term used by the computer science, within the computer science, to classify uh, 3D objects. So we use uh, this classification, uh, parallel pipe. And then within the city, for example, uh, we can classify into several uh, objects depending on the uh, um, depend on nature of the data set. So in this case, we uh, classify into uh, three, uh, three um, classes, residential, office, and other retail buildings. So um, it turned out to be uh, very good in terms of the classification. Uh, in this case, we uh, define data set with this kind of uh, Supply chain management uh, data set within the city. So you can so you can see the the, uh, the cloud of point cloud of the um, uh, of the data. Uh, one dot represent one dot represent uh, supply chain within the city. So then we classify into customer, customer C one, customer supplier, and then manufacturer. So all this um, classify into three classes. Um, this is the definition of the clustering. Um, basically, uh, we use k-means, um, k-means uh, within the Krebs clustering algorithm. Uh, however, the k-means, uh, the k-means clustering method uh, produce uh, something um, that not not really good for to have. I mean, to have a uh, 
uh, to have the um, um, what do you call this? Um, um, I mean, in terms of time, right? And for example, in this case, we put here the K means produce more than one cluster. Uh, that not supposed to be if we want to have a better um, algorithm. And then also uh, the, the, the K means also process overlap uh, among the parallel pipe, right? And then also, of course, repeated data entries. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the data structure uh, will be increased. So, this is uh, one of the issues or issues within the K means, uh, the cardinal K means. So, what happened is we introduced K means plus plus. Uh, so we introduce can be plus plus. So by having this K means plus plus algorithm, uh, the searching algorithm or searching time will be much, much better. Better performance and of course better accuracy. And this is the um, this is the uh, an example of the um, the um, outcome of the purpose clips clustering. So as you can see uh, the original K means method uh, they use uh, and produce, I mean parallel pipe at four, and then with some overlaps. So with the purpose, uh, with our purpose uh, method of clustering, we produce, uh, yeah, with a parallel pipe four, but no overlap, right? So uh, no overlap means good for, uh, good for the next. Uh, this is the clustering. Um, yeah, an example of the uh, an example of the uh, clustering uh, of the 3D objects. Uh, this, the, the top one is the building, and the uh, the bottom one is basically clustering of the uh, point kind of objects. Within that uh, technique, we utilize Bonner diagram. I think uh, within the computer science, I think Bonner diagram is not uh, alien. Uh, it is a, a good technique. Uh, and very useful. We people from the uh, GIS group uh, heavily use this Voronoi diagram, especially when we want to find out the proximity of objects, right? So the the, fun, the, the feature of the Voronoi, I think, very useful. So we also uh, the, the, uh, utilize um, uh, 3D Voronoi. So 3D Voronoi is basically the 3D version of the uh, 3D Voronoi very useful when it comes to managing 3D objects. If we able to um, create the 3D objects, a region of 3D object within the uh, voxel, yeah, voxel kind of data set, right? Um, if we compare, if we compare uh, the, the performance of the uh, 3D R3, for example, 3D R3 is commonly used within the uh, available commercial uh, uh, database, for example, Oracle, K-Means, and our approach, the Voronoi CCDC, uh, is basically 50% uh, better than the, um, the uh, 3D R3 um, system, right? Uh, is another this this another analysis uh, of the different uh, different um, searching method uh, the, the our method for Voronoi CCPC K means and Street R three you can see uh, uh, better than uh, yeah better than the commercial commercial um, searching technique so because we 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 uh, we have low overlap. And then also low coverage. So low overlap and low coverage means good news for um, the technique. Uh, also, uh, we also um, did um, three kind of um, data updating. So first, we input the data, we call it insertion, and then compare with other commercial technique. So ours is uh, uh, better. You can see on the slide uh, the blue. The blue graph is basically our technique. And for the deletion, if we want to delete something from the database, so again, um, our technique is basically uh, better compared with the other uh, commercial uh, approach. And the other, the, the third one is basically modification. If you want to modify the data, and then, you know, this is uh, again the performance is basically uh, again better than the, uh, the commercial. Uh, data updating from the commercial uh, software. 
Okay, so very response time, also good, right? Also good, and then, um, yeah, it says around here, basically, if we have 50,000 objects, uh, our approach, borrow my CCDC only once is five seconds, sorry, minutes here. And then if we use a 3D artery, um, 80.4, um, yeah. Um, I think this is MS is in a second or something like that, right? So, but the idea is, um, yeah, it shows that uh, ours is uh, faster than the, the commercial uh, solution. Okay, and then um, this is basically the um, the, uh, the feature, yeah? the feature of this Varona um, CCBC. Uh, it's promising uh, method, yeah? especially for urban data management. Uh, if we have big data or, you know, for city, I think our approach should be able to um, to manage. Um, we also uh, we also utilize this method within the three uh, D three D building of um, uh, Copenhagen a few years ago uh, with the one million buildings. Uh, it turned out yeah, of course, better than uh, the uh, commercial uh, software. Okay, and the other feature, minimal overlap, as we discussed a few minutes ago, and then of course less input and output operation, uh, fast query response time around 60 to 80 percent compared with the existing approaches. Um, so we 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 think that the, it is a dedicated structure or special access method, especially for 3D urban application, and hopefully based uh, approach could be utilized for 3D data management uh, and then of course embedding library information into the specialized memory and then hopefully uh, of course improve the 3D uh, data retrieval time so this is the uh, main feature of the uh, of the um, you know Dorono CCDC uh, special access method issues and challenges we have Still, we have problems. Yeah, although we have um, we have technique to to we have technique to um, to retrieve data record with uh, quite quite fast. But when it come to the uh, when it come to the um, database and visualization, we still have an issue. So we have normally we have database, but there is no, no visualization, right? Uh, and then if we have visualization, also we have problem with visualization. So what we need to have a combined effort. To, to have um, digitalization, database, and visualization in one in one place. All right. Uh, for the concluding remarks, uh, we would say that uh, the techniques of the uh, developed uh, tech, uh, approach um, basically work, right? Especially for 3D special data buildings, right? buildings, not irregular objects like trees or plants. Um, as we discussed earlier, uh, not every situation can be uh, can be uh, addressed by this technique. So they have limitation, of course. Uh, but we try to improve um, uh, as we go along. Um, we think that the developed technique really could enhance the GIS function, and obviously could be uh, could be implemented. If we have the, uh, of course, I mean, good for the uh, future, uh, because at the moment, it, this 3D GIS software is still not available in the market. So, our technique, our algorithm, uh, our solution, you know, function that we develop, um, hopefully will trigger a new, uh, new trend for 3D GIS software in the future. Uh, hopefully, one five years time. Um, I have to thank my previous PhD student, uh, Mr. Baik from Pakistan and uh, Ms. Azri from Malaysia for their contribution in this research. And I, uh, before I end, I would like to invite all the audience here in Rabat or in other part of the world to, uh, to join our next conference, Smart Status, Smart City in a Stuttgart University. Uh, will be online and face to face, and the publication will be uh, within SPRS, so peer review. And I also would like to invite everybody uh, to our next 
conference will be organized in Marrakesh, uh, online as well as face-to-face. -face. Uh, we call it Geo Special Asia Europe. And, uh, it is, uh, will be organized by my university, UTM, as well as University Hassan II, Casablanca. Um, yeah, the publication also peer review uh, within ASTRS. The, the last meeting that I would like everybody to join will be in the coming of October 14 to 14, it will be in New York University, uh, this one virtual. Um, but we have, uh, we have, we have, um, we have events for local, uh, local partners uh, within um, several universities, um, Australia, in Germany, of course. So we, we uh, plan to create local local uh, sub event within this New York University uh, main event. Um, this one will be in conjunction with the Keras workshop. So those who are in the mapping world or GIS world, I think these three upcoming event will be very useful for for you to join. So I think with that, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Professor Tohadi, um, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, dear Professor Siki, uh, for your presentation. It was uh, very interesting. Uh, maybe I can ask uh, for the assistant if there is any question uh, uh, about this uh, keynote. Uh, If there's no question, I have many questions. Uh, to continue with your conclusion about uh, uh, about integration of uh, your work in uh, in GIS, uh, I understand that you have uh, created or your students have created some uh, uh, ad hoc. Uh, the tools uh, in Python. Uh, have you tried to integrate your algorithm in uh, GIS open source or, or not? Yeah, it's for, for timing, uh, we um, we are not involved in the open, open source. Uh, but it'd be a good idea if we can uh, somehow integrate with the open source GIS. I think uh, it would be good for researchers like you know like us. Uh, so that more people can uh, access the tools, right? Yes, uh, because uh, after you have to wait that some uh, GIS, uh, commercial GIS want to integrate your algorithm. That would yeah. be a, a good idea. Um, and um, uh, so uh, at, the, at the end of your presentation, I see that you uh, uh, talk about uh, a future conference on uh, smart cities, uh, and uh, my question is about uh, how your work can contribute in uh, on these topics of smart cities. Uh, uh, which services can be proposed for uh, in smart city uh, for uh, the citizen for the people? and so on, uh, thanks to your tools. Uh. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, this conference, Smart Data Smart City, will be the, uh, I think it's the, the sixth, yeah, the sixth uh, version of the conference. Uh, the previous, the, the two previous one was organized uh, within my group at the UTM Malaysia. Uh, so this time, next year, I mean, this year will be in uh, Germany. So sure, uh, the, the work uh, that we develop here uh, can be utilized, uh, especially uh, to um, to uh, manage three uh, D three uh, D buildings um, access method. Because this conference uh, also focused on the uh, um, how 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 best or how fast we can uh, search three uh, D record within the database. So it will be useful then. Because you know, a smart, smart city, for example, the people require uh, everything fast, right? Yes. So, yeah, hope, so hopefully this can be, I mean, contribute to the, uh, the future development of the uh, software. Okay, that's a good, uh, good idea. Uh, so, is there any 
other question in the assistance. Uh, we have many participants in uh, online. Uh, you can uh, also ask your question in the chat if you have some uh, question. Uh, No question now. So, uh, dear professor, uh, if there is no question, thank you for your presentation. It was very interesting, and thank you for the the presentation of the different uh, conference that we you will uh, organize because it uh, could be a good idea to continue to follow your work on, in this conference and on smart cities, very interesting. Uh, so, uh, uh, thank you. And uh, and uh, maybe the conference will continue on uh, 15 now. And so I will uh, let uh, the organizer to, okay. Okay. to say the next. So, Thank you, bye -bye. Thank you, Professor Thank you, bye -bye. Uh, Farias Rahman, for uh, your interesting keynote speech. And uh, also, uh, thank you, Professor Claude Duvalet from the Harvard University for moderating this interesting talk. So, next session uh, for attendees, uh, please break for lunch until 15 and followed by parallel session. So, thank you very much. Thank you.